Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT Geek YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome to, uh, we, we are started episode, or say module four with, with the last episode, which was around planning, implementing, and time management. Uh, we are on the, the second uh, of episode of module four and of the entire management sort of topic. Um, before we get started with that, I want to say hi to my co-host, co-star, Dwayne. Hi, Dwayne. <laughs> hey, Shabazz, how are you doing? I'm not bad, how are you? I'm doing okay. Good, good. Um, so yeah, we, we, we kicked off module four, the last module in, in this whole series. It's it's a bit, a bit me and Dwayne are a bit emotional, so uh, if, we, if we do burst out into tears, don't mind. We're just emotional that the series is coming <laughs> to an end. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, as I said, let's get started. We did an intro in the last episode, uh, the first, module, first episode of module four, so you, you hopefully got a refresher about who me and Dwayne are. Um, so let's get started with this episode. So, as I mentioned, we're, we're into module four now, the last module, and this is all around plan implementing and identity governance in Azure AD. So the topic is still entitlement management, uh, planning and implementing that, part two of that. We're going to cover managing access requests, and and the, the really then I'm going to go into two. We're going to go into two demos, and then Dwayne's going to take over. And we're going to talk about managing lifecycle for external users with Azure AD identity governance, and then also looking at add terms of use acceptance. So it's going to be less of me, more of Dwayne, which I know people prefer. So, so let's look at managing access requests first of all. Okay, so there's a two-step approval or deny access requests sort of process. Um, so that that kind of that two-step process is to find and open the access request pending approval. So there are two ways you can open that. Um, so one is to, to look through an email. So you get an email from, from Microsoft Azure that asks you to approve or deny uh, a request. So this is an example of the of the sort of uh, email you would get. So what you do here, you'd click on the, the sort of um, approve or deny request option at the top in blue. And then you sign into my access portal. Um, one of the prerequisites of that is that you have to be an approver to obviously approve that, okay, you have to have that right, correct role. So we've then got, you know, view that request as answers to questions. So um, we'll have something like, like this. So to, to, to access this, you navigate to that approvals tab in the My Access portal. You go to that request you'd like to approve and you click on the, the request details thing that's in red there. You can also click on approve or deny if you are ready to make that decision already. But if you want some more details, you click on request details. The information provided by the requester will be at the bottom of that panel. And then based on that information, you know, the request provider, you can approve or deny a request. You can give a reason for your, your choice at the bottom there. So then we got to the approve or deny request. And this is what that looks like. So after you've opened that access request pending approval, you can see details that will help you make an approve or deny decision. So click on view um, on, on the access request. This is a link to open the access request pane and then you click on details to see the details about the access request. You can then click approve or deny and enter a reason you know you see fit. As I said, it's gonna be not a lot of me talking today, it's gonna to be mainly Dwayne and the demos. So Dwayne, I'll hand over to you. All right. Thank you very much. So we're back in uh, in the identity governance area. We've got the entitlement management piece here. Um, so we've got, uh, you know, uh, as, as Shabazz was saying, if we go into our access package uh, and um, we can be review uh, and we can make changes to how external users are handled, what their questions are, what the questions are. We didn't really get into, uh, didn't create any of those uh, in the previous demo, uh, but we can do it now if my access packages would actually come up today. Um, but we can also uh, manage the life cycle of external users here in uh, the settings tab. Uh, and again, identity governance is not playing nicely today. Go back to Entra and see what that does. Yeah. Let's see if that works a little bit better. They're not playing nice. There we go. There's my access packages. So here's uh, here is the access package uh, that we created 
in the previous demo, uh, we can edit this access package and uh, and go through and uh, and make changes into um, into assignments and into requests. Here we can uh, we can set up how the how the requests take place, uh, and then uh, we'll talk more about access reviews in another uh, another section uh, in the demo. Uh, but again, uh, not playing nicely. Uh, but as far as uh, managing life cycles for our external users. So uh, what I was saying in the previous demo is it's very helpful within uh, identity governance to, uh, to utilize this as a project collaboration between, uh, between your member users and your external user, your external partners uh, to encapsulate uh, the life cycle of, uh, of that project and what everybody needs to work together on uh, within uh, within entitlement management, very helpful. We can, you know, uh, we can block uh, external users, and we can see here. This is really the life cycle and what happens uh, when uh, when they lose their assignment. You know, and what are we going to do, um, and how long are we going to do that? Um, you know, so uh, so maybe maybe when we set up our access review and we set that up for our external users, we say that this project's ending. December 31st uh, and uh, and so what is going to happen to that external user on our tenant when that is, when that access is uh, is removed from the access package is really what we're what we're doing here uh, so uh, you know we can set up to block their access we can remove their external user or we can or we can wait a number of days before we move them for the from the directory so this is making sure that we don't have um, we don't have uh, these external users sitting on our directory uh, that may or may not be able to log into resources. This is a way to really protect uh, what's going on uh, within our environment. And you can see, uh, you know, here in terms of delegating the entitlement management, we can uh, we can add catalog creators. Uh, you can see our global administrator and user administrator. Uh, can create and manage catalogs by default, but if we want to create add some uh, catalog creators, which is you know probably what we want to do, uh, you know, and it's you know from a non admin role, least privileged access, uh, we may want to uh, may want to do that um, because we you know our user administrators should be focusing their time on the actual users within our Azure AD tenant, the overall organization, uh, you know, catalog creators are you know the people that are managing that project or managing that uh that group the group within uh group within that's working within that catalog so that's really what we uh, what we're looking at here so uh you know by default you can see that you know that what happens after they lose access to you know after that project ends and that uh and that access review is gone they're going to be blocked they're going to be removed in 30 days uh, but if we want to be a little bit more stringent and maybe we're not going to block them but we're going to remove them still you know within 30 you know 15 days whatever we can we can do that here within the lifecycle management um, if i go back to uh, let me see if i can go back to my access package here let's just Skip on that for right now, being that it's not taking. Uh, now, another thing that we can do also is uh, is uh, if we, uh, you know, if we're having an external company come into and use our software, our SharePoint sites, you know, our our SaaS based applications, we might want to have our have them agree to a terms of use uh, policy as well, so we can put a, uh, a terms of use in here. Uh, require uh, require a level of consent and set that up through uh, through conditional access as well for the you know for any user maybe it's not our internal users maybe it's our, our external users but we can tie that into that group that has access to the access package uh, to agree to the uh, uh, to a uh, a condition you know to a terms of condition uh, through a conditional access policy. So very, you know, very helpful here. That way we can make sure anybody logs into our, uh, logs into our access package and our catalog 
that they've agreed to uh, our terms of use for the software that they're going to be using. So uh, very, uh, very helpful there uh, as well. So as I said in the previous section, I didn't know a whole lot about entitlement management until, uh, until I took the exam and, uh, and wrote, my, wrote the study guidebook, but I'm a big proponent of utilizing this to govern and encapsulate resources that need access to your tenant uh, for a predetermined amount of time uh, and, uh, and the ability to then manage that, manage that access, uh, which is a key point to, uh, to just any identity and access management, any governance over your resources is you don't want temporary, uh, you know, exter you know, external users to have permanent access to resources within your tenant. You want to be able to monitor their access, manage their access and, uh, and create an overall life cycle on that. And doing entitlement management uh, is definitely the way to go on that. So we'll talk more, I think, in the next um, in the next uh, section on uh, on connected organizations and how we can get those connected organizations and those external organizations to uh, communicate. Uh, and we'll the, also uh, later on talk more about access reviews, which is a very important part to the uh, to the review and continuous approval process. So back to you, Shabazz. Thank you, Dwayne. Yeah, two, two really insightful um, demos. And again, very short sort of theory element. And again, we just thought that seeing it in the portal and seeing in practice is much is going to be much better preparation for you than me rambling on about stuff. <laughs> um, so uh, thank you very much. That, that was episode two of the entire Magic. We've got one more episode left. And again, it's going to be a very demo heavy. Um, so you get less of me. Um, so um, just just again a reminder in the description you can get you are the links to mine and Dwayne's socials Twitter LinkedIn etc. Um, you can also get a most important bit is a link to uh, purchase Dwayne's uh, Dwayne authored a book on the SC300 um, exam prep with packed so um, yeah you know please do buy that um, it's great to to support to support it and um, you know follow it as you follow these along the the videos. I've also got a link to the GitHub um, sort of area for the SE300 labs, and you can follow those as you're following Dwayne's labs as well. Thank you very much, everybody, for you, for watching, and thank you for your continued support. Um, but up until next time, thank you and goodbye. Thanks, everybody.